What's up? I'm Troubleshoot in the Super Quick Guide. I'll be showing you an amazing piece of software that I'd highly recommend you check out, especially if you're playing on a lower powered PC, a laptop, or even a handheld like a Steam Deck, a ROG Ally, etc. This piece of software that I'll be showing you adds not only upscaling, so FSR and a couple of other things, but also frame generation to quite literally any game that you can think of, whether it was released in 2006, 2002, yesterday, or even you're using something like an emulator on your PC to play from popular consoles, you can add frame generation and upscaling to quite literally anything, and it's super anti-cheat friendly. Before we get into it, if this video looks a little bit blurry, I'm having to record this in a bit of a weird way, as the way that this program works, it seems to confuse OBS quite a bit. Essentially, how it works is that it captures the game window using a couple of different capture methods very similar to OBS Studio for example in fact they're pretty much one-to-one -one the same capture methods then it applies upscaling frame generation and sends it straight back to your monitor at full quality with very very little input latency allowing you to upscale or add frame generation to quite literally any game on or off the market anyways with enough intro let's go ahead and double our FPS in pretty much any place you can think of the program that we'll be talking about today is lossless scaling this is a paid program and usually I don't cover the sort of thing unless it's a sponsored guide but this software is actually super incredible especially for portable players and it's also incredibly incredibly cheap if I check out the store page you'll see that lossless scaling is 72 South African rands, which sounds like a lot, until you consider AAA games, such as Ghost of Tsushima, is 1,100 rand, and this is pretty much the going price for AAA titles. In your currency, this is how much lossless scaling is on Steam. So for example, in US dollars, it's $7. However, while it's on sale, it's dropped as low as $1. So it's pretty affordable. And by the time you finish with this video, you'll have a great idea of exactly what it does, its positives and negatives, and you can make your own informed decision. Now that we've talked about how to get it, let's actually test it out. So firing it up, you can immediately see we have scaling, scaling type, and frame generation. Obviously, frame generation is what most people are here for, and currently there's a version 2 that was released quite literally just two weeks ago, adding a ton of extra performance, quality, etc. So a lot of videos covering this haven't actually got up-to-date info. This one has. Starting from the very top, we can scale pretty much any game on the screen by clicking this button here, tabbing into the game, and just like that, it'll apply scaling and frame generation to whatever game we decide. Upscaling is cool and all, but for most people, frame generation's what everyone's going to be interested in, as you can use upscaling in most modern games nowadays, but not every game has frame generation support, which is super important, especially if you're only getting 40 FPS in titles. This will take your 40 FPS and double it to 80 or so. This is huge. You have a performance mode, which should be better for lower power GPUs, but most of the time you can just leave this off. Scrolling down, you can choose whether you want to capture your cursor or scale the speed. For example, if you're blowing up a small window using upscaling, you can change rendering for it. So enable HDR support, for example, or drawing FPS, which I'll be doing to show you what kind of performance it gets. And at the very bottom here, we have capture. This is how it works. We have DXGI, WGC, and GDI, which are all different ways of capturing applications. Quite literally, the same way that OBS does, if we check this, you'll see we have the same options here pretty much. It essentially records that window, applies these settings, and blows it up. You can also, on top of this, choose a different GPU to handle upscaling, and choose a different output display if you'd like to blow up a small window and display it full screen on a different monitor, for example. At the very bottom, we have cropping, multi-monitor support, and other things like that. Let's go ahead and actually test this out. So, with pretty much everything cranked all the way down to low in-game, with no FPS cap, no upscaling, and no frame generation, my performance in Grey Zone Warfare at 2K with a 3080 Ti is a solid 50-ish FPS, and this is what the performance looks like. Obviously, this is okay, 50 FPS is playable, but I'd much prefer to have a higher number, especially if you want to crank things up to Epic, for example. I'm now setting at a solid 42 FPS, which is not the best, and there's a bit of input latency just off the bat. Obviously, I can use upscaling and things like that in-game to get better performance, but let's go ahead and see what lossless scaling does with frame generation. All we need to do to use this program is to click Scale, then within this countdown window, select the actual game we want to upscale and or apply frame generation too, and just like that it should be working straight away on your own monitor. If you are playing the game windowed, it's probably blown up to full screen size and everything's applying for you. However, due to the way that it works, I'm not able to actually capture it in OBS, so instead I'll need to use a capture card 
to record things properly. To do so, I'll scroll all the way down and I'll tell it to output to a different display, which is actually my left monitor. And using this, I can also show you the difference in input latency. So if we scale it, click back into the game, you can see, or at least I can see that I have the game on two monitors now. Let me switch across to the other one. So just remember, I'm getting a solid 35-ish FPS, well, 40 something. If I switch across to my other monitor now, you can see in the very top left in very small white text, a solid 69, nice, FPS. Meanwhile, while the actual game number behind it is running at 34. Unfortunately, the graph won't update properly as that's applying to the game, then the game's being recorded, upscaled, frame generated, and being blown up to full screen, so it's not actually technically the game still. But as you can see pretty much straight away, the game is infinitely smoother than my main monitor, where it's just super stuttery at 30 FPS. Here, it's a solid 60 and it looks really good. Just to give you an example on input latency, I'll need to record it with something like my phone, for example. If I hold up my phone here, you can see both monitors, or at least when I transfer the video, and over here, I have my mouse. If I look between these, you can see the input latency is there. It's relatively noticeable, but it's not all that bad. Obviously, in Twitch shooters like this game, it may not be the best having a couple of extra milliseconds input latency, but to be honest, if you're playing at 30 FPS anyways, this is a big improvement, even if there is just one extra millisecond. I'm still super accurate. I can aim just as well as without using this. So there's that. And of course, here's the input latency. You should see the difference pretty much as is. So there you go. That's what the input latency looks like, at least at 30 FPS. But what we can do to improve input latency a huge amount is to actually cap the game's FPS so everything is more stable. Frame times and frame pacing should be more stable as well. If I pause the game and head across to settings, followed by graphics, in here I can cap the frame rate to slightly lower than what I'm getting, which unfortunately the closest option is 30. If I was getting 55 FPS, I should cap to just 50, but I can't type in a number here, so we're stuck at 30. This means that my main screen over here will be 30 FPS, pretty much on the dot, always with relatively stable frame times, and the upscaled slash frame generated game on the left over here should be a solid pretty much 60 all the time. This is great, it's super smooth and more than playable. Obviously, if you're doubling 40 FPS instead of just 30, the experience will be infinitely better, but we work with what we have. Once again, let's check input latency. So I've got both of them over here, and you can see things are mostly about the same. If we go ahead and tab into lossless scaling, we can actually enable performance mode, which should help input latency ever so slightly, or at least from what I can see. Tapping back into the game and applying it once more, we should be able to see that input latency is ever so slightly improved, or at least from my eyeballing it. Once again, here's a quick test. So... There we go, there's that. There's only one thing that you may have noticed is that when it's moving around quickly, there's a couple of weird glitches that happen visually. That's simply because it's recording the game window and it doesn't have any in-engine information, much like AMD FSR frame generation would have. This is just recording the window and applying frame generation to it, upscaling, etc., as if it were a video rather than a fully 3D world, for example. As you can see at the very bottom of the screen, there's a weird like, I don't know, flowy, wavy effect as I'm running along here, which isn't present on the main game. And of course, it won't be present on the game if I use FSR frame generation, for example, but of course the developers need to add such a thing. Also, if you look around relatively quickly, you notice the same wavy effect, but if you're not looking around too quickly, the game is absolutely more than playable and so should most games be. That's pretty much all the negatives that I can think of. Usually when it comes to upscaling games and applying frame generation, the issue that you have is that UI is also frame generated on and all of the overlays on your screen become super blurry when you're looking around, etc. With this, it doesn't actually seem like that's the case. Firing up V Rising, for example, you can see there's a ton of overlay here. And if I look around, this is the native game performance. I'm getting a solid, let's see, 30 FPS as I've capped it in game, and things look pretty good. However, if we apply lossless scaling, you can see I'm getting a solid 64 FPS, and things feel really smooth compared to the main game. And as for input latency, both of these are perfectly playable. As you may have noticed, the waving effect is not really so present in this game, and all the UI is staying pretty much perfectly in place. Text is almost perfectly readable. There's only very minor glitches that are happening with it. This is a huge improvement over other different frame generation mods for different games. It seems to recognize UI really well and keep that separate while frame generating for the rest of the game, for example. As I'm doubling 30 to 60, I can actually 
head into options, graphics, and set the frame limit to maybe, I don't know, 60. Now, when I head back into the game, you can see I'm getting a solid 120 while the actual in-game FPS is 60. With a much higher frame rate such as this, you should see that all of the weird glitches with the UI are practically gone. There should be very little waving as we look around quickly, as we have more frames to work with and frame generate with. So I've taken a solid 60 and cranked it all the way up to 120, pretty much fully saturating a high refresh rate monitor, for example. This is fantastic, especially if you're trying to save power, if you're on a laptop or or even a portable device, you can double your FPS in pretty much anything, and of course you can even add upscaling. I'm pretty sure this game has frame generation and or upscaling anyways, but in lossless scaling I could choose maybe FSR, leave it as is, and BAM! Just like that, without even having to do anything, FSR is now applied to my game and aliased corners should look better, even though I'm not really upscaling anymore. It's 2K to 2K, but if this game were 1080p for example, so doing that, you should see the quality is pretty much exactly the same. I'm now actually using FSR on a game without having to do it in the in-game menus, or of course say it's a console game running in an emulator, or an older game that doesn't even know what upscaling is. This software is fantastic. So, having a quick look back at the program before we finish up here, you can add different profiles here, so for example, grey zone as I have here, you can browse for the actual game files, navigate across to where they are, select them and click open, and just like that, after enabling auto scale for example with a, I don't know, 5 second delay, the next time you start up the game, upscaling should be applied, frame generation, etc, all based on whatever you want for that game. So, if you're playing something like, I don't know, an old Mario game on an emulator, you can actually choose a different kind of upscaling that's more suited towards a pixel type game, where keeping the sharpness of the pixels is super important, instead of just blurring them all together like, I don't know, one of these other options. You can use something like an anime upscaler by Cubic, LS1, etc. There's a ton of different options here that are all suited for different game types, but of course, FSR and NIS, for example, should work on pretty much anything. Also, on top of this, using settings in the top right, you can set a hotkey to automatically scale whatever program you're tabbed into, start as admin, start with Windows, etc. And you can get it to start up whenever you start your PC, fire into a game, and you don't even need to think about it, it'll automatically apply. The only way that you'll know that it's working is when your FPS feels smoother than what it says in game, or of course you have something like the draw FPS enabled, where it pops up in the top left corner, for example. That's it. If you're playing on a Steam Deck or a ROG Ally or something like that, some kind of handheld gaming device, this should pretty much double your FPS there, add frame generation to whatever game that may not support it, and even upscaling, for example, saving you tons of battery life, giving you extra performance, etc. It's a super powerful app, and to be honest, it was probably the easiest 70 Rand I've had to spend, especially when it comes to making older games look better, and of course, feel better, that don't have any kind of these technologies built into them. This is something that I wish I'd bought earlier. Anyways, with all of that out of the way, that's really it for this quick guide. Hopefully you found it interesting, you'll find a link down below, this video wasn't sponsored, there's no affiliate link, no nothing, it's just a powerful program that I'll be mentioning whenever I can. Anyways, thank you all for watching, and a special thank you to Superior Emerald for being an ultimate supporter, my name's been Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.